Hello folks and welcome to part 5 of Project Aurus Ensis and today we are making a backplate. But not just any backplate, no 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 no. It has to be something in keeping with the rest of the rig and that has basically been dialing everything to 11. Now a normal backplate typically is just a flimsy piece of metal or plastic that just sort of clips on or maybe goes through a water block. It doesn't necessarily do a whole lot. Now you can get performance backplates which have sort of um, thermal pads that interface with parts on the back of a car. So if you've got memory modules on the back for instance that can do quite a lot. So what we're going to be doing today is making an absolute chunking backplate that's going to wrap around the card itself. Now this idea basically stemmed from a couple of weeks ago when it was alerted that um, the edge of the PCB of the 2080 Super Water Force Edition that we're using doesn't really look very nice because it's just a generic PCB colour, it's not dyed throughout the PCB itself and it does sort of stand out a little bit so obviously an option there is just to paint it or cover it with some permanent marker but that seemed like a bit of a cop out, you know? If I'm going to be making a backplate anyway or doing something to it why not just take it that extra mile and have it so that the backplate wraps around the GPU itself covering the PCB. Now I thought that sounds a lot more interesting. The thing is, that's actually quite thick and I wanted to add some other features as well because I wanted to add say inlays and make it RGB and have everything sort of light up in the correct way, in an appropriate way to the other parts of the rig. Now that's a little bit more challenging so let's just take a look at what I've decided to go with. Now for starters, since this backplate is so incredibly thick, 9mm to be exact, we're going to be using this stuff, which is the 10mm aluminium once more. And that should give it quite a bit of heft, but it does raise an interesting point, because how am I going to put that onto the bed? Because the first operation is very, very simple, I could just use regular clamps for that. But when I flip it over to do the inside, which is basically a giant pocket, that leaves essentially no room at all to clamp. So, to get a little bit creative, and instead I finished making this thing, which is a fixture plate, if you've been curious what this part was at the beginning of the video. So basically, it's made out of acrylic rather than aluminium like I normally do, but that's because this is just a single use piece. I don't have to worry about the repeatability and things like these clamps wearing the threads down. I'm only going to use it once and I have tested all of these threads. They are going to be perfectly fine. In fact, they've been good to about six to seven uh, newton meters and these are rated for just two. So they will be absolutely fine. And the good thing is I can get good dimensionality on acrylic with my processors and it's much, much easier to machine. Plus I have some going spare from other parts. So this just seemed like the logical choice and I should be able to use it to clamp around the outside frame which will make it a lot easier to machine. Because the problem with aluminium is because there are far more cutting forces involved and I have to machine it very, very slowly, I can't use something like double-sided tape because it will just eventually work itself off the bed. In acrylic, that would be fine. It would cut it way too quickly. It wouldn't be an issue. Aluminium, no. Now I could use the super glue method, but the problem with that is I'd have to locate it on the bed anyway, which would sort of necessitate me making something like this regardless. And of course super glue doesn't at all attach to the acetal so I'd have to put a layer of tape down and even that can peel off it over time. Uh, you need to use very specific tapes and I just don't have any of that to hand. So this seemed like the best method. So in terms of what we've got left to do, we're going to start with the aluminium. We're going to do op one, which is basically cutting it out and that's going to make it nice and dimensionally accurate. Then we're going to insert it into the fixture plate when it's on the bed. It should all be nice and level. We're going to dial it in and then we're going to do the big pocketing cut for that. Then we're going to take it off. We're going to put it in Rocky over there to do the glass blasting, get it all lovely finished up. And that should be the back plate itself but we need to have a few details. So inside of the backplate, we're going to have an inlay made from frosted acrylic. Now the idea here is the inlay is going to be the Aorus logo and that's going to be fully RGB from the inside of the backplate and that will then connect to the motherboard directly rather than going to, through the graphics card connection, it's going to go to the motherboard because that has a little bit more flexibility. But it should be pretty cool and I'm hoping that I can get that inlay right. But for now, we need to get this aluminium on the machine and cutting so that we can have op one done and do the exciting stuff.
Now before we get stuck into OP2, I just wanted to show you something that doesn't always get featured in the videos, and that's the prototyping. So I made a 3D printed prototype of this backplate so that I could test that everything would fit. And this is a really good use of 3D printing because that was very, very quick. Um, I did run out of filament halfway through, so I had to swap from this nice gray that I like using to black, but it does all fit and it's pretty interesting. And it gives you a good idea as to what the inside is going to look like as well, because we've got this inlaid section here, which I've made with clear PLA, and then that's going to be banked by LEDs, which are sunk into this channel like so. And over here, these little briquette almost looking things, this is where the LEDs actually shine through into the plastic. So it keeps it all very low profile and inside the metal itself. Now on the top, aside from this just being a part of the design, these sections actually provide clearance for the motherboard because there's a big beefy heatsink on that and you need to have a certain amount of clearance. And if you make the backplate too thick, obviously it's going to interfere with the motherboard. So what this does is it basically keeps this side of the plate very, very thin and sort of regular height. And then this part, which can be thicker, then extends past that. And that's what I've done in this chunking piece of aluminium. So. This weighs an absolute ton right now. We're gonna lose so much material in an incredibly long operation. Now this bit also doesn't come across on the camera very easily, but this takes a very, very long time to cut because my machine can only go down to about 0.5 millimeters of its depth of cut. And if I'm facing, it's about 0.2 millimeters if I want it nice and stable. Well, yeah, that's gonna take a very long time because that's with a three millimeter tool. I can do it with a four millimeter, maybe a five millimeter, but you do get a lot more chatter. So I tend to use the three millimeter ones because they just tend to be more stable and they work better for finishes later on. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking this and sticking it in the, the fixture plate, upside down like so, sort of in this arrangement. And then it's basically gonna pocket out the entire backside so that it looks similar to this one. That's gonna take about five hours apparently. So fingers crossed I can actually get that done before it gets too late outside because this is a really loud process. I'm in a residential area and as loud as my neighbors are, this thing's louder than even little Teddy. So fingers crossed, let's get it all done. And if not, I might have to divide the operations, maybe do just the roughing operation today and then the other one tomorrow morning. But fingers crossed it won't come to that. Let's get it on the machine and hope for the best.
Now that, that is something really rather special and I'm so happy with how it has come out, especially if you compare it to the stock backplate like so. Now I'm just gonna excuse this wire that's hanging out at the moment because I don't really want to address that until I do the proper wiring stage because obviously there's going to be a lot of other RGB and rather than taking it straight into the motherboard, I might want to do something else like maybe put it onto the port which is on the back of the GPU here or maybe link it up to some other things. So I'm leaving it long for now because that seems a bit more practical. But speaking of the RGB strips, I got a lot of questions last time as to which ones I'm using and in this particular one I'm using some ones which I haven't used before which are these tiny tiny Alpha Cool Aurora ones and these are their rigid strips and they're only about 2.5 millimeters wide so it's about 2.5 millimeters wide to 2.2 millimeters thick and that is so incredibly small which is perfect for things like this. So if you have a uh, space that's incredibly limited, such as a water block or inside like the nooks and crannies of a case, these I think are actually pretty perfect. And I'm gonna be using them I think quite a lot later in this project and hopefully in future ones because there are so many applications for tiny LEDs like this because the really big ones, you'd be surprised how much extra room you need to add to a plate in order to accommodate them. Now, one of the cool things about this backplate mod is aside from just looking very nice, it's also functional. So the original backplate came with some thermal pads on the inside, which connected to above the memory spots. And I've carried that forward on this one and used the same kind of spacing. So it should do the same job, if not better, just by being a sort of a thicker piece of aluminium and of a higher grade. Now, one of the interesting things there is whilst maybe it doesn't do a whole lot for this particular card, I know that backplates have had a positive effect for the current generation of cards. So potentially doing this again with future ones could be a really interesting idea. Now there's still plenty more to do for Ensys and the next big one is going to be doing the reservoir panel and the blanking plate. So on the left hand side I have a big reservoir and that's going into a pump at the bottom and on the right there's sort of a blanking panel and both of them carry angular designs and this sort of RGB finish to them. So this should be pretty exciting and they're definitely going to be quite challenging. But of course you wouldn't want to miss any of that now would you? And the best way to stay up to date with the future updates is by subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. You can also find us over over on Facebook, Instagram, bills.gg, and Twitter. Stay safe, folks, take care, and I'll catch you next time.